Houdini Engine can simplify your workflow in a lot of ways, but you're going to end up spending a lot of time copying files, especially if you want the original HDAs separated from the HDAs in your target project. I would really want to simplify this workflow. A more ideal workflow would be something like this. You select all the files, press Ctrl Shift S, click on the appropriate project directory, and you're done. And in this video, we'll set up this kind of workflow. We will now build this export system. This system will follow these basic steps. First, we'll check that a node is an HDA. Then it will check if the HDA is locked. Any HDAs that are locked, we will not touch. We will then save and update any changes to the HDA. And finally, we'll copy our HDA to our target project. For ease of use, we're going to use a custom radial menu. Go to Edit, Radial Menus. This will be an editor menu. We'll add this menu using the plus button in the bottom corner. The menu will be a regular menu. I'll name this button Houdini Engine Export. I can then apply to save. In order to use this menu, we'll need to assign a hotkey. We can add it using the edit button. This will give us a keyboard map. The dark keys already have a hotkey assigned. The striped keys are used over multiple contexts. I want something that is easy to remember. So I'm going to use the modifiers Ctrl and Alt at the same time. In the network view, there are no keys assigned when using both Ctrl and Alt. And I'll use the combination Ctrl Alt S. If I press the S key, it will bring up a tooltip showing which hotkeys currently use S. I'll press the green key button to add the hotkey. I'll get a field where I can type in the hotkey and I'll press Ctrl Alt S. I can then apply and accept the changes. If I now press Ctrl Alt S in the network view, my radial menu will appear. I'll now add an option to this menu. I'll go to the shelf tools and drag and drop any of the parameters onto it. I'll clear the script. I'm going to change the label to Unity. This is because that's what I'm exporting to. This, however, could be any application Houdini Engine links to. I could also make the menu items refer to a specific directory within a project. I'll then set my icon. I'll go to the H icon folder. And within this, I'll go to the SVG icons folder. This is where most of the Houdini icons are stored. In this case, I'll use the engine engine unity icon. I can apply again and then start working on the script. I'll start by printing out a value to check that the menu is working. I'll do this with print export. I will then open a Python shell. In the network view, I press Ctrl Shift S. I then click on the Unity button and I get my value printed in the Python shell. I can now start working on the script itself. First, I'll be importing from the SHUtils library. This library has a lot of tools which are useful for copying files. From SHUtil, import copy file. I will resize this window so I have more area to work in. The IntelliSense in the viewport doesn't always update properly. This is something which appears to be worse with the Python 3 version of Houdini. I will use a workaround for this, however. If I create my main variables within the Python shell, they will work correctly within the viewport as well. My first variable will be for a node. To select a node, you'll use the Houdini library. We will then use the node method. The argument is going to be a string, and I will reference one of the nodes which I know is an HDA. The next variable I'll want is going to be called definition. This will be used for the HDA definition. The HDA definition is what constitutes the HDA itself, and the node will link to this definition. I'll get this using node 
dot type dot definition. I'll now work on the script itself. First we'll get all the nodes that I'm selecting. The variable is node and this will call who dot selected nodes. I can then loop over these nodes using for node in nodes. I'll then print node to make sure that this is working correctly. I'll use the radial menu in the network view to test the script and check the output. Now we want to separate out nodes. What we want is nodes that are HDAs and these HDAs must not be locked. The reason I don't want locked nodes is I rarely unlock Houdini's native nodes to go inside them and I do not want to accidentally override any of the native nodes in Houdini. This is a very basic solution to this problem. If you regularly unlock Houdini's native nodes, you will need to create a more robust solution. For example, in this scene, all the lights are actually HDAs, but all of these will be locked by default and will therefore be excluded from the script. We'll start by getting the HDA definition for each of these nodes. Definition equals node dot type dot definition. Now we'll create the conditional to separate these nodes. If definition is not equal to none. None is the default return type in Python when you do not have a value. So every node that is not an HDA will return as none. We'll add our second condition with and node.isLockedHDA is equal to false. We've now isolated the nodes we're going to work with, and I can start getting values from these nodes. The first value will be the HDA name. I'll get this using the node type name method, and this will be called on the definition. Next will be the HDA directory. This is where the actual HDA will be stored. We'll get this from the definition as well, using the library file path method. This will give the entire path and the file for the HDA. The Unity directory will then have to be constructed. I will create this path manually, but it would be better to set these paths using environment variables. This is the option which you will need to set to your specific needs, as my file structure will be of little use to you. It is also what you'd change if you want to have multiple options in your radial menu. This will be a string, and I will be modifying the string. I'll use the dot format function to modify it. This is the directory I want to use in Unity. I'll open it in the Explorer. I'll make sure I'm in the correct directory and then I'll copy the path. I can then paste my directory into the string. I will, however, have to change the forward slashes in the string. They need to be either two forward slashes or a backslash. I personally prefer the backslash because this is more concise. I'll then add a placeholder for my name. I'll then add in the file extension with .hdalc. I'll then pass the HDA name into the string using the .format function. I will want to check if our HDAs have been changed. And if they are changed, I will want to save the changes. To check that they have been changed, I'll use the conditional if no dot matches current definition. This will check if the HDA definition is the same as the current node. And I'll check if this is false. If it is, I will update the definition using definition dot update from node and the target will be node. I'll then make sure this has been saved by using definition.save. The argument should be the HDA directory. I can then make a copy of all the updated HDAs using copy file and they'll be copied from the HDA directory and they'll be copied to the Unity directory. I can then select some nodes I can press Ctrl S 
and I can save these for Unity. And if I go to Unity, I'll find that I have the copies of the HDAs.